Welcome back, everyone. Our next group of speakers are going to tell us quite a lot about streaming data, which is very important. The idea is that you have data coming in, and you need to learn from it and act on it. And the data can be quite messy. There can be lots of gaps. Um, you have uh, sometimes uh, non-stationary problems where the example space changes over time. And so, uh, and then we're going to hear a little bit about um, some infrastructure for dealing with streaming data. How do you store it and query it? Um, we have quite an international group of speakers here. Um, we have a speaker from Portugal and a speaker from France. Um, our first speaker, our keynote speaker, is Hao Gama. Uh, <clears throat> How comes from uh, Portugal, uh, from Porto, Portugal. He's uh, an associate professor at the Lab of AI and Decision Support. His specialty is online learning, uh, dealing with non-stationary processes. Um, he's written a book, Knowledge Discovery from Data Streams. Um, it, it has 30 different algorithms in it, all for streaming problems, so uh, you'll want to check that out. Um, it's certainly going to help us for our own research here at UC Berkeley. And uh, the book covers quite a diverse problem space. Uh, everything from GPS, geospatial data, computer networks, to uh, you know, trying to measure ad clicks. So um, without further ado, I'll give this the stage to Harold. Uh, thank you. of applicability of 
of the learning patterns. Uh, this is, uh, from my point of view, uh, it the continuous processing uh, and learning from streams opens new research opportunities. And these opportunities are, uh, we are, which will be able to reason and learn about the evolution of the learning process. So, discriminant analysis and clarification <coughs> problem uh, where the first approach were from Ronald Fisher in the beginning of the 20th century. At that time, uh, someone collected by a uh, uh, different species of flowers measured by uh, the petal and sepal uh, measurements and uh, learned uh, a linear combination that was able to discriminate different species. But nowadays we have machines and that uh, collect data and send the data to <coughs> other machines. So if we, uh, even here in, at this moment, using mobile phones, generates a huge amount of data. So this is uh, a density estimation of uh, the mobile activity in uh, Milan during a concert of Madonna. You know where is this concert? <laughs> it's easy. GPS tracks. For nowadays in Fort, we have a project that to monitor and predict the, the traffic of taxis in the town using GPS so, the main difference is that we have much more detailed information about what is going on in a lot of activities. In the internet, telecommunication, mobile device, satellites, and social networks, and so on. The information that we are collecting now is a degree of detail that was not uh, able to think about 10 years ago. Most of this data will never be seen by a woman. And we need real-time analysis of this data. Uh, several learning tasks can be used for monitoring, tech intrusion, tech anomaly activities, classification, prediction, complex relation, event, event uh, processing, and so on. A clear example of what we will talk about is credit uh, card numbers. Each uh, transact, credit card transaction is in real time analyzed by a classification model. This classification model will say, okay, this is a legal transaction, or this is a problem. Of course, the, the classification model cannot be a static model, cannot be a model learned offline and put to classify transactions in the real time. Because uh, there are always types of frauds. Frauds become every time more sophisticated and so on. So we need a classification model that learns with real data. But to learn with real data in real time, we need label data. How can we get what obtain uh, uh, label data in this process? So, for false negatives, the feedback is in the initial because the user complains and the outcome of this kind. For uh, false positives, the feedback 
cartes que me tranquilam, o ego me sente de, de tempo de alma e o ele segue, this is not a microsecto. So when we, we have delay, we obtain the, the label of the perfect. Uh, another example of uh, uh, how we can label things uh, is uh, with power condition. Uh, nowadays, and uh, it's a recommendation from the European Commission, in 2020, the use of renewable energies should be in Europe around 20 percent. For example, in Portugal, nowadays, is about so the wind power prediction is given the wind velocity and direction, predict the power produced by a set of turbines for each hour in a time horizon. Usually it's three days and three days here. So for every hour in the next three days, we need to make a prediction. So, uh, the problem, the mapping from wind speed to wind power is not a linear problem. This is the, the theoretical uh, mapping between wind speed to power. And there is another, uh, another rule of the state, is uncertainty. Uh, as far as we go, in time uh, or origin, the uncertainty grows and prediction must take into account uh, the uncertainty uh, associated. So this is the for a single uh, turbine the power over time. This is time and the power in megawatts produced by a single how we make a deal. Basically, uh, we have access to numerical weather prediction. And at, at 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, the prediction to wind, the speed and direction is forecast for the next two days. 24 hours later, we have a new of uh, forecast and so on. So from the wind speed forecast, we may uh, predict, uh, predict the power produced by uh, wind power. And in this case, is uh, even that I make now I make a prediction, for example, for tomorrow at uh, three o'clock. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, I obtain the label, the truth value measure, the measure value. So I can label with a delay of that is the given by the time margin, I obtain the, the label that I need required to update my service. <coughs> In generic things, we are in presence of a continuous flow of data generated high speed from dynamic and time changing about environments. And the problem is, if you look for the theory of machine learning algorithms, most of the algorithms assume that examples are high. That is, they are independent and generated at random from a stationary system. If this assumption, the usual practice of using the static model trained from a finite training set is okay. But 
if we need to maintain the decision models in real time, we need to be able to incorporate new information uh, and, uh, when it is available. We need to detect change and adapt the decision model to the most recent information. And this adaptation process requires some forgetting of the information. In this context, we are in the presence of the unbound training set and the decision model that evolve with the evolve over time. So, the data stream computational model requires that we are able, should be able to process each example in small form, small form and time and space. The sequential scan of data, random access, is not allowed. Uh, we need to process examples and speed their hash. Moreover, we need to have decision models <laughs> at any time. Uh, we need to be able to detect and react to concept risk. And we either would like to have a model uh, with a, an accurate model uh, equivalent to the one uh, that will be generated by a batch without the mining on. So, non stationary distribution means that the concept about which data is obtained shifts. Uh, and to, uh, to, a decision, to learn a decision model, we need that uh, uh, concept of some stability. If the world is changing faster than that we are able to learn, we cannot learn that. So, we are assuming that each concept has a minimum value. So, uh, I can love that context. So, this happens, for example, in web search queries, e commerce, user modeling, in spam, fraud detection, and so on. Uh, there are two, at least two, different types of change. One is that the change in the distribution of the instance space. If we do not the, the, the distribution of the instance space. And this is usually uh, called reporting. A change in the description space doesn't mean a change in the pattern. Because the pattern is a condition of distribution of the label with respect to the instance space. So, what we call concept drift is a change in the condition of, in this condition of distribution. It's this type of change that we are interested in. So, if uh, we observe a change in this distribution, uh, that means that our decision model must be adapted. There are diverse causes of change. In, in this uh, change in key characteristic properties of data, or change due to modification in the context of learning. This is the uh, change in even of the variable, a uh, variable that we are not affecting in the, during the learning process. Uh, uh, there is a research field called Context Sensitive Learning, where they assume the existence of context, context of people. So, for example, the location when I uh, do some uh, quiz in Google, uh, the intentions of the users in e comments and so on. Uh, these features are not relevant for the discriminant task, but are useful for identifying or characterizing the context of learning. 
So, uh, if, as in most problems, we don't have these features available. So, the framework that I'm proposing here is a two-layer learning system. <coughs> the layer zero resides the data stream a stream of label and unlabeled uh, examples. And for each labeled example, the program classifier predicts the uh, makes a prediction. So this classifier is uh, used to solve the original decision problem. At the same time, we have the layer one. This is the meta layer. Uh, the meta layer besides the same set of attributes as in layer zero, but the class label is either true if the uh, decision model at uh, layer zero correctly classified in the, this instance, or false if the the layer zero classifier misclassified that example. So, basically, this, the layer zero tries to solve the original decision problem. The layer one tries to learn the regions of the instance space where the uh, layer zero classifier performs well. <coughs> As I okay. pointed out, there is a delay between the time you observe the attributes, the set of attributes, and the time where we decide the uh, label of that example. So, we assume that at time t, we decide an unlabeled example. So, the level zero classifier makes a prediction. Later on, with a delay delta, we recite <coughs> the label of the, the example uh, beside the time t. So with the correct label, we can update the classifier at layer zero. Uh, during this uh, delta, during this interval, we must store in memory the examples in a short term memory. So basically, the system works like that. Yeah, this is level zero and level one. This <coughs> is the set of examples, attribute values, and with a delay, the class labels. For each example, when we reset an example, the level zero classifier makes a prediction. And you can put, uh, when we reset the true label, we can estimate the error, the loss error. From this sequence of true false, and using the same set of attributes, we learn the level one classifier. So this, uh, this classifier predicts if the current state of the level zero classifier is performing well or not. So assume that uh, we observe there is a change in the conditional the distribution of the labels given the attributes at time stability. So that means that the, the current classifier, the current decision model, is no more consistent with the most recent information. The, uh, the probability of error will increase. We can detect here is by analyzing <coughs> the sequence 
and to now the question is okay I detect a shark uh, what what should be my reaction should I learn a new decision model is there any other uh, alternative so our approach we we learn we are over time, this is stream, over time, and we learn a decision model for the uh, classification problem. At the same time, we learn a method model. This method model characterizes the area of applicability of the corresponding level zero model. When we detect the drift, we start learning a new decision model and the corresponding metamor and so on. Now uh, when we detect the drift, instead of uh, forgetting the correct decision model, we store the correct decision model and the corresponding metamor in a sleeping mode. So we detect the drift, we store in a sleeping mode the decision model. Now, we detect the drift. We can start learning a new decision model or look for the pool of previous learned models if they apply to the current context. So, when a drift is detected, we can learn a new decision model or reuse one of previous learned decision models. So, the setting is like that. We detect drift when we decide the feedback. So, we label the examples. At the same time, we have in a, a short term memory a set of unlabeled data. And using this information, we can ask to the meta models <coughs> the, which is the any of the corresponding model applied to this context. And basically what we ask for the meta model uh, your model uh, will correctly classify these unlabeled examples and you we compute um, uh, the number the number of times that the meta model predict that the corresponding decision model will classify that example correct and if we observe that there is a model that with high probability will classify or correctly classify the unlabeled example, we uh, reuse that decision model. Okay? So, an illustrative example of using this framework, uh, we use uh, the C concept. This is a special data where uh, we know when a drift occurs, and it, it, it's a benchmark data set for concept drift. The C concept is a two class problem described by three attributes, and only two are relevant. There are four different concepts that appear in C. So we have a sequence of complex. Uh, uh, concept 1, followed by concept 2, concept 3, concept 4, and concept 1 reappears here. This is the uh, stream set guideline. So the, for learning the original series problem, we use uh, the layer with zero classifier is uh, a nice bias. And for layer one classifier, we use also 
an addressing of night flights for two class problems. So, use also the very fast decision tree composed by Pilch Mings and Houston at Kennedy Zero. Uh, this is a decision tree that is designed for high speed data speed. Uh, the SPT is able to uh, process uh, thousands of examples per second. The, the idea is quite simple. Is a small sample is enough to choose the optimal splitting rate. So the algorithm uh, works like that. Collect sufficient statistics from a small set of examples. And uh, for example, for 200 examples, compute the merit of each end, that is uh, the ability to obtain to discriminate class. And uh, use the often bound to guarantee that there is statistical evidence in favor to the best categories. Basically, the algorithm works like that. So this is the current decision tree, the incoming stream. Each example is uh, uh, traverse the, the tree from the root node to a leaf and update sufficient statistics at the leaf of the current structure, structure. Time to time, uh, usually with a uh, few other of examples, we compute the information gain of each attribute or at a given leaf. And if the entropy or the information gain of uh, the best attribute uh, the difference to the second test is greater than epsilon. This is the optimum bound. So the tree we expand. So the optimum bound has some properties. Uh, it applies to any uh, random variable uh, with the range R. And this depends of the distribution of random variable. Basically, the Austin bomb tells me how many examples I need to collect to make a decision. Okay, so this uh, the night flies and the GFDG are used as layer zero, layer one, uh, the lab. And for this detection, we have used uh, an algorithm proposed in zero four, but we can use uh, any uh, uh, change detection algorithm, like the uh, Bayesian or Gaussian algorithm. The advantage of the, this algorithm is that uh, we have a warning zone. Basically, the predictions are thermally trials. They are described from, for using binomial distributions with the probability of F and the corresponding uh, standard deviation. The algorithm, I forgot to say, the base idea is uh, learning is uh, learning from data streams is a process. And you can use techniques from statistical quality control to monitor the quality of the learning process. So, basically, at each prediction, we compute the probability of the error and the corresponding uh, standard deviation using the, the binomial. And R if the error at, of, at the example at the current time is in the 
out of control fashion, we declare that there is a degradation, which does mean there is an increase of the error rate. And uh, it, uh, the increase of the error rate reach uh, out of control uh, fashion. That means the degradation, uh, the degradation of the large if the error is not increasing, so the learning process is in control, and in between the, the error is increasing, but has not yet reached the out of control level. So basically, this is the trace of the evolution of the error rate. This is the meaning of set so far. And this uh, is when the change of food, uh, we observe an increase of the error rate. At that point, we reach the uh, warming level. Since then, we do not update the push position model and store in the memory this example. We suspect there is a change in distribution generating examples. So this set of examples corresponds to a different distribution. And we store in the, in the short term. If the error continues to increase till a drift level, we we uh, we relearn a new model using the examples in the short term So the algorithm is uh, while in control we update the current decision model. When we go to out of control, we relearn a new decision model with the example stored in the short term memory. So, and this is the experiment with the C concept. The, this is time, this is the error rate. And we plot the error rate, this is in black, is the error rate of a decision model that uh, without the detecting change. The vertical bars denote where change of food. So, from the first change, the error of decision model increased and was not able to uh, uh, decrease again. Uh, the blue line and the red line is a uh, uh, nice line with the, the uh, drift detection that uh, I have explained. So, the red line corresponds to a drift detection, but reusing pretty large model. The blue line is drift detection and relearn a new model. And you can observe here the difference in behaviors. At that point, we detect a change. If you start relearning a new model, the behavior is like that. By reusing, uh, in that case, you reuse the model that was learned during in the first concept. So our model is the training as uh, some uh, predictive accuracy. If you learn from scratch, we need to learn everything. And this difference is due basically to this, the, the model that we are reusing was already trained in this using this. Mm -hmm. So this is with uh, nice size. And this is similar plot, but using 
DSTE as metalavir. Again, the, the, in that case, the blue line is the using, reusing previous lab models. So, in, uh, in summary, the advantage of reusing previous lab models uh, something that I believe that is important is the automatic <coughs> identification of recurrent concepts. It's not only saying something is changing in the data that I'm observing now, but we provide more information. Something is changing, and what we are observing now is similar to what has been observed time ago. So, uh, the use of uh, reusing of uh, concept, uh, models allows fast change detection. Uh, in these experiments, we have uh, our model detected, reused four times another model, and three times this was reported. Some uh, experiments with uh, real data sets. This is uh, based on the news groups, and we are interested, <coughs> interested in predicting if a user is interesting, interested in a news group or not. So this is the, the behavior of the system that reuse previous concepts and using the FTP as a reference. So, in black is without change detection. Uh, uh, in red is uh, uh, relearning from scratch a new model where the is detected. The text can improve is reusing previous learning models. The main difference, of course, in these two components, so they were, we detect one, two, three, four uh, concept links in the data, and we, the, the behavior here uh, was similar. We reused the model second learning model. And in that fashion, we reused the third so there are another real world application <coughs> is from data from the spam assassin detecting spam. Here we detect three drifts and the, the, we are able to reuse the concept here. So Conclusions. So we we study streaming mining problems where change uh, context change over time and might reoccur. We propose a framework that identify context using drift detection, characterize the context using meta learning techniques and select most appropriate base model using unlabeled examples. So, the main lessons are uh, learning from data streams is not a one-shot learning and is an evolving <coughs> process. And, uh, uh, If we don't consider that the data that uh, we are collecting might change and the, the, the regularities and patterns that we are learning might evolve over time, we can uh, produce very bad decision models. 
the learning from data steam still open the possibility to monitor the learning process. And not only monitor, but also reason and learn about the learning process, progress itself. In uh, 74, Gistra talk about self-stabilizing algorithms. So, these are algorithms that starting from an arbitrary state is guaranteed to converge to a legitimate state. The property of self-stabilizing stabilization enables a learning algorithm to recover from transient fault regardless of its nature, and uh, the, as will be able to restore its previous performance. So, the main conclusion is that intelligent systems must be able to adapt continuously to changing conditions. Must be able of predictive self diagnosis and this self-star uh, 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 algorithm is a major scientific and uh, sharp. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Questions in the audience? Um, thanks. Have you thought about uh, doing a meta meta learner where, uh, in, you go meta, yeah, meta if you want, uh, where you basically say instead of selecting a previous model that you've already learned, you, you can actually take an aggregation of all the, of all the models and essentially learn with admixture of all those that you can. Perhaps a better result. Uh, so, in, in this talk, I talk about single single model. But for uh, to deal with uh, changing and evolving the screen, or if I did, it's much better to use ensembles of models. So, uh, this is true, I completely agree. And we have done experiments, but uh, for to uh, pass the message, I prefer the simpler approach. So, so in general, the recursive way of the system is just that uh, the data keep coming and the model is changing. So the initial model, you actually build it based on a constrained environment. Means that you have really good control of it. But now you put it in the stream, that the data becomes noisy and everything else, and you start updating this parameter. So how do you do that? Because the same value is not the data is coming now, it's the same as the value that you have in the constrained environment for the first initial model. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. In fact, uh, real data is not. When we, when we, we were in batch mode, in the offline thing, you can do feature selection, you can do uh, example selection, remove noise, normalize data, and so on. And in the stream set, this, this all this aspect of the set must be done online. So what the increased complexity in uh, my experience with real data, namely <coughs> in the uh, wind condition, uh, that uh, 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 using the uh, online technique for normalizing data and select uh, and remove noise that uh, was uh, much better than using uh, offline that means either in an offline model and put the model making predictions. I have an online model that makes preprocessed, learning 
der Dame zu spielen brauchen. Ein bisschen ganz später, äh, in dem von Dick schon vor Future äh, aufgerechnet werden. So, did you consider this dichotomy as one of predictive type of based on the controlled strategy that they people they use to online on the training, which is in a, you know, just a control theory. It's just not as general data mining or a training sense. There's a control theory that you still can train the model in a normal environment yeah. uh, and you're adapting actually and learning the error itself, not just on the learning the model itself, but it's also how to actually yeah. compensate this error. Yeah, I, I, uh, in real world applications, in, uh, when we collect data over time, uh, we must take into account the charge, the things might change. If you uh, collect data without taking it uh, Ignoring the evolving nature of data, that might be problematic. So, uh, learning out must be keep with science fiction. That's my. We have time for more questions. It kind of seems like there are two things involved here. Uh, there's the selection of the appropriate model, and there's learning of the model itself. Um, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, you were implying that the two are intertwined, but it seems like one could be learning continuously in batch mode uh, new models that are best fit and applying all of the sort of refined techniques that are cheap and well known while using the change detection and the algorithms we described just now to select the appropriate model learned in batch. Um, it seems like that would be a, an easier system to maintain and design. Do you know? uh, so, okay. I think that, 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 uh, what is the question? Um, the, the question is your choice to do both model selection and model building uh, online. Well, it yeah. seems like the main insight is the ability to change models online gives you a big benefit. Okay. In, in that case, uh, so the reuse of previous learning, well, so if you learn, uh, uh, learn from scratch, uh, in at least in the uh, uh, initial set of examples, it's expected for performance degradation. If you are able to identify the, the data that I'm observing now is somewhat similar that I have observed in past and reuse the model, so we have faster uh, learning rates, basically because in that initial phase, we have better performance. There are several ways of, uh, of uh, reacting to change. And uh, for some kind of decision model, for the issue of uh, 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 the composable decision model, uh, it's possible to adapt decision model without starting from scratch. For example, if you have decision model, you can remove a simple, a simple tool without degrading the learning process. Again, okay, also if decision trees, instead of learning a new decision tree, you can uh, remove or prove the node uh, that take the uh, change. So, and the adaptation is uh, a bit better performed. For the global model, like nine tracks or support vector machines, okay. so where uh, uh, that uh, 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 change implies 
any other questions? I just want to follow up on the same thing. Uh, so, you know, you think you have a gradient model, right? And essentially, I just want to follow up on the last question, similar idea. If you have a Bayesian model, and in some sense you're inferring as you go along, right? Then, uh, I mean, so that, that seems to, what you're describing seems to fall into that framework. So, why should we do a separate SPC, which is a static control chart in some sense, and, and not do something which is, you know, which captures the dynamics directly, uh, right? Maybe it's an offline discussion, but uh, I didn't fully understand because SPC is built a static type of uh, limit, right? Whereas we have a dynamic process which is changing, yeah. why not infer the shift to the distribution? But SPC is quite simple, yeah, yeah. and it's memoryless, so it's uh, uh, easy to maintain in a streaming setting. You can you can use much more sophisticated. Uh, I uh, have one question for the speaker. Um, so, um, when your concepts change, uh, sometimes there's one algorithm that does best, and then when you have a different concept, another algorithm might do better because the concepts might come from different distributions. So. Um, do you have any adaptations to your algorithm to sort of uh, work with multiple different kinds of algorithms that are appropriate for different kinds of concept classes and to shift them, that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, that's a good suggestion to be narrowed by that. Uh, so we are working a little bit in trying to <laughs> characterize the eye of a politicality of the learning algorithm. So, but it's, uh, it's not that easy. No. But it's, um, it's hard to never, never, never let, to, for all these type of problems, an ensemble used to be much more appropriate. So, and you can use this type of technique to remove <laughs> members of the ensemble and decide when to learn the new the new. Uh, a new, uh, new decision model to add to the ensemble and so on. So the dynamics of the ensemble might be monitored using this type of thing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.